Hey y'all, um, I know it seems ridiculous to be doing a video based on this, but I actually had time today and it seems over the top editing and all that kind of thing, something like this for what we're talking about, but it was perhaps the easiest way for me to get my thoughts across about the, the work at the property. And um, clearly, you know, just by sending you a video like this makes it seem like I'm investing way too much time, but this this took minutes to do. So, um, and I thought it was the best way to just get the ideas across that I have in my head. Um, so I'm just going to go through some pictures of the house and explain to you how I feel about these things and, and what, you know, obviously we can talk further about them, um, but I'll just sort of talk to you about it. The, the first set of pictures are going to be the ones that I think are more relevant and will come up um, in a usage and occupancy occupancy uh, inspection um, as code violations and all that kind of thing. A lot of these things you're already going to know or we already talked about. But just to get my thoughts down to everyone about the majors, and I actually spent very little time at the house doing this stuff yesterday. Um, I didn't, you know, put a tester on a wall for testing GFI outlets or anything like that. I didn't have any of those things with me. These are just the things that stick out to me that will end up being what the buyer's inspector will tell their bu the buyer, um, or they're going to be things that the buyer just notices when they come up to the house and make a decision about it. Obviously, this isn't an exhaustive list, but these are the things that I thought at least would get the ball rolling. So we start here in the garage. Clearly, you have a breach of fire code here with the with the missing drywall, um, and that would have to be replaced by any standard um, for safety and for for code violation. So um, while we're in the garage, these support posts, uh, as you know, probably should go. I just don't know what they're supporting. Um, the tub is in the cantilevered portion of the of the bathroom. So if these could go, that would be great. Because uh, any this is a huge red flag for buyers to see something like this. So um, if we could figure out a way to get rid of them. Also, are we going to put a garage door back in and make this a two-car garage, which might be more inviting for buyers since this space really isn't interior space. It might be better as a two-car garage. It all depends on expense. I also included this picture because I didn't take a picture of it, but the people door going from the garage into the living space probably will need a, uh, a closer hinge on it. Because there's no step up from the garage into the living space, it's a gas fume issue, and uh, the door would require a hinge that automatically closes the door. Um, I don't know whether they'll call that a fire rated door or not because of that metal sheet, um, but I would just let them call that out before we automatically replace the door. Keeping in the garage, um, we're going to move on to the electrical. You know, this is the service line coming in from outside to the box. And this is the uh, unsheathed service line on the outside of the meter heading up to the drip loop. Obviously, that, that's going to be cited as something that needs to be repaired. And this is the exterior service line underneath the meter. Uh, I put this in here also because I don't see any of the proper uh, grounding wires. So there's not a ground rod that I could find, and it doesn't look like it's um, ground to the water meter any longer. Um, so that stuff would all be, uh, you know, noted as well. The most important problem, though, with the electricity is this uh, connection. The service drip loop may not be adequate, but there's no cap, no sealant. Um, the next picture will show you the neighbor's house, which is what it needs to look like. And I would think that an electrician would have to do this to, to have it done safely, but I'll leave that up to Bob. So this is the, the neighbor's property, um, and that's what a proper, you know, cap should look like. I just include this picture because there's no ground wire to the um, plumbing, and a lot of inspectors won't accept just a ground wire to a ground rod. They want both. This was the wire that might have been the ground wire at one time. And of course, we already know all this. Every time we see an open splice like this, it needs to be put away properly. We already know the handrail and the railing has to go or has to be uh, repaired for just pure safety reasons and because of the UNO. You'd need 4x4 four four posts at the corners. Uh, things would have to be carriage bolted in, not screwed in, and clearly the spacing in between the rails is not adequate. 
I also get really worried about these little 2x2 two two support cleats for the steps. They're being held in by screws which will eventually rust and then someone's just going to go right through these. So I don't know what the fix is here to make these things uh, more reliable. Um, nothing really to say about that at the moment. The other thing of note with the deck is that the 4x4 posts outside of them actually looking like they're starting to warp and bend a bit are sitting directly on the concrete patio. Um, so wood and concrete don't really do well. There should be a metal plate between these because you can see the water wicking up into the bottom of these posts. That will of course cause rot and this whole deck is supported by these posts. Um, also. It would have to be confirmed, I don't know how far they're going to take this, but if that patio is not you know, below the frost line, they wouldn't consider these proper footers um, for support of the deck because the patio can shift and, 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 and sink and all that if it's only you know, four to six inches of, of concrete. Um, I don't know whether this will come up. In fact, this is one of those things where I would say we would wait until the buyer's inspector even bothers with it or if the UNO inspector even bothers with it. But I will say that if I were doing an inspection for a buyer, that I would suggest to the buyer that this will probably rot and be a problem. And as they are very important for the support structure of the deck, it needs to be uh, fixed. You guys already know about this, but this is going to be a major red flag to anybody. Um, we have to figure out how water is getting underneath the slider to the deck and uh, take away all evidence of staining and water retention like this. I don't know if because of the way this looks that it's going to be worse when we pull down that plywood and there's and there's rot, but there's uh, this is under the the structure of the home itself, so this needs to be um, this needs to be dealt with, which I'm sure you guys already know. So I don't know what they're going to say about using timber lock screws. I know they're strong and they're easy to work with, but I think building code today requires lag bolts or carriage bolts with this ledger board into the house structure. It looks like the flashing's good, even though we still have water underneath that door. But um, they may require us to replace these lag or these timber lock bolts with uh, lag screws. Um, but again, this is one of those things I would let them call out. Moving into the attic, you know, all electrical stuff like this has to be capped off. No open splices. I actually have a line item in my report because power fans are usually installed like this um, and they're almost always wrong so you got to have those wires packed away so about the furnace um, you know the fact that it's working is actually pretty key and I talked to Victor about this and I don't know why I forgot to mention it to you but whenever I come across a situation like this where the furnace is clearly beyond its designed life which this one has cycled through two designed lives and is still kicking but it's still working the buyer isn't going to be interested in it they're not going to want it um, but here's the thing, and Victor reminded me, we could offer the buyer a home warranty which would cover this furnace for a year and then it's on the insurance company to either repair it or replace it if in the first year that the furnace stops working. So really that's probably our best option so that way we don't have to replace the furnace particularly because it's already still working um, and uh, it satisfies the buyer's fear that they'll turn it on you know, once they get in and it won't work. So that's an option. So the water heater is 16 years old. They typically last 10 to 14 years. The last thing we want is this thing to leak, which is what they tend to do. So we're on borrowed time with it, just saying. We will be cited both for the furnace and for the water heater for missing drip loop, or sorry, drip leg it's called. It would be an extension piece on the gas line which catches any condensate and debris so it can be uh, cleaned out. Um, it's just an inspection thing and it's not expensive. I, I can't do it, but uh, it's one of those things that will come up in a, in a report. The only indication of moisture I got, and I didn't really you know, look around too much, especially with the, with the wood paneling in the, in the finished part of the basement, is underneath the steps and there's a little bit of the staining at the base of the concrete. Given all the rain we've had, that's actually really good because this is concrete block and there's always some dampness um, and some what we call efflorescence, white powdery substance on the walls. So I think we're cool as far as um, a, uh, you know, the house goes. I did notice that the backyard was an absolute swamp, but it was a swamp away from the house. So that is what it is. This is still the closet underneath the stairs, and I only included this picture not because of the plumbing line, but because 
if the buyer's inspector is a real stickler, he may note that there's only one level of, of drywall, only one sheet of drywall between the house and the garage. Typical fire car, uh, code would require two 5H, 5 8 inch thick drywall on the interior wall and the exterior wall. So the wall you're looking at here, actually the other side of it is the garage. So they may call out that there would be needed to be extra drywall applied to this side, which is inside the closet underneath the steps. Again, back to stupid stuff. Uh, inspector will probably note that there's only two screw holes and one of them's missing and the other one is a drywall screw. Uh, he'll probably recommend that we have a blunt end uh, panel screw used for security. This is the electrical panel in the garage. Just putting it on the list. Back to that garage front entrance, you know, obviously we all know about this rot and we know about the rot because we know about the poor drainage in this location. Now that getting into some prices that we probably don't want to deal with, but I'll tell you when a buyer comes and he sees water pooling at the front of, a, of the apron of a garage, they notice, they always notice. And they're always worried about whether that water is coming into the garage and is it rotting the frame of the house and the whole house is going to fall down. So. Just saying we got to get this out of sight, out of mind kind of idea. Again, this is just a real quick cleanup thing and then try to get the water to uh, swale away from the property at this location. And we all know about this glorious window which is contributing to moisture probably not just where you see it but in the inside of the wall and hopefully that hasn't rotted any uh, structure. Um, so better to deal with this soon. Major red flag here. I believe I replaced this sill and now it looks like it's uh, on its way to needing to be replaced again if it isn't painted soon. Uh, either capping or painting the rake boards on the house is important. And I'm sure you guys already know this, but the boards are going to start to rot more than they might already have. At this point you'll see in the attic pictures there are some gaps where bees and bats could get into the attic. Speaking of the attic, you're not permitted to vent your kitchen fan into it, so this would have to be routed to one of the side walls of the house. And these are those gaps that I was telling you about from the outside. These are minor. I'm not really worried about these, but they will be noted. And another little bitty. This is over a gable vent. You can actually see through to the outside above that, and uh, people don't like that. We talked about this stove a little bit on the phone. I know Bob's planning on just removing it. That's probably the best idea because otherwise to make this thing um, work, you'd have to line the chimney. Um, and I don't want to get into all that, but there it is. Um, a lot of the little cleanup stuff with related to these basement windows would be easy to do and really quick to turn around and make it look clean and nicer. Like this window just needs a new lock. The sills are just filthy and unpainted and I just think we could really turn that place around pretty inexpensively as far as aesthetics go uh, just by cleaning up the sills. As I already mentioned, all the wiring that has open splices like this in the basement we already know about. Get it all secured and out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. Probably just throw up some drywall here and refinish what was taken out, put some vents on these so that all the heat isn't going into the basement. And air, well, not air conditioned because we don't have any. Trim out these windows real fast, make them look finished, and uh, don't even draw an eye to them. If we have a real stickler for an inspector, he may actually test this window. Um, you can do that with 3D glasses or something to see whether this is tempered glass. I actually don't know if it's tempered glass, uh, but I leave it up to you, Bob. Because this is in the shower and it's at fall height, it could be considered a danger um, and most likely would be cited by both inspectors, the buyer and the UNO. <clears throat> so if it's not tempered glass, this could be an issue. Um, but that's about it for the, the list so far.